He's gone, he's edged it. It's gone to Devon Smith, who's juggled. But he's taken the catch, and Alistair Cook has gone cheaply again. His heart must have been in his mouth, Devon Smith, when that ball bounced out. Not to release the bowler as well. He got an edged drop off his bowling in the first innings. Taylor, this time Smith hangs on on the second bounce. That's the first. They'll be hoping for early wickets with this new ball. It's one for one. but well short of second slip, which is a good indication of the lack of pace in this pitch. Genuine edge as well, but as you say, just gone nowhere. quite rightly it does kick is that bounce oh he just drew his bat inside the line there Careful. End of the ninth, 11 for one. Oh, this would have been a death. Rocky's ball going down the leg side. Goes to kick it in almost inside. <laughs> Kicks it onto his stumps. Just watch this. He's going to have gone back. better and get a feel for that yeah, that's way too uh, wide frustrating for his captain telling him make him play make him play be very very pleased if he can just stand there and let those go through Gone on the stroke of lunch, it's bounced from Ben and he's taken the outside edge. Good work from Chris Gale, bringing Ben on just before lunch. Bell goes, England are two down and in some trouble. Well, it's quite short, this. It does bounce, it's out there. Big edge. Good catch, never easy. You thought bottom edge, I thought it was top, but he thinks it's the bottom of the bat. <laughs> but Ian Bell is gone. He's gone for four. England are 11 for two. That's sorted that one out in a hurry. That is a gorgeous delivery. Taylor has done what every man in the West Indies wanted him to do. He has got rid of Kevin Peterson at the first attempt. The celebrations begin in the stands. Look at them in the background. They're loving it. The danger man has gone. What a sight for the local crowd. Peterson looks at the big screen. His off stump went flying back, just like the old days. A fast man, no loosener this time. Full and straight. And what a sight for the fast bowler. Off stump, cartwheeling back, a little bit of swing. And England's danger man's gone for one. It's 12 for three. Oh. oh, now that you can do absolutely nothing about. Never get the hang of that one, whether you're a batsman, keeper, or anyone. It had a shot straight along the ground. Oh. 
the rough, kept low. Strauss couldn't do anything about it. He's got to use that front pad more, Strauss. Got to get out to it. Well, up uh, go the entire West Indies sides, but the one thing that hasn't gone up is the finger. And there would appear to be a, uh, a question hanging in the air, which is... Shall we refer this? Who's seen it? Chris Gale will be asking, who's, got, who's had a good view of that? Who's seen what happened? Was there a glove? Was there something there that we can get the third umpire to have a look at if his monitor's clear? We can have another look, whatever happens. And uh, it's well away from the glove. Upper arm, shoulder. Everyone goes up again, and now goes the finger as well. So Andrew Strauss becomes the next man to leave the stage. He's hung in there gamely, grimly even, for his nine runs. But he is now the fourth man out, and West Indies absolutely cock a hoop. Well, that tells you something about that dismissal. There's no doubt, because the batsman himself has said, I am not referring it. So it tells you something about this. It is out. It has been edged. The noise is there, Strauss knew it, everyone knew it. Fine, fine bowling from Jerome Taylor, he has three for eight now. And the England captain leaves for nine, his side are in all sorts of trouble, 20 for four. That's well timed from Flintoff, and hit beautifully straight. Cut off just inside the boundary. <laughs> Both Lynch off, uh, off the mark, has two now. I met this with a, a very, very straight bat. That's one thing to stop the ball. Next thing is to leap the fence. I think it has hit the stumps. He's running, but the ball has hit the stumps. He's bold. Collingwood has to go. He doesn't realise it. There's no clue what has happened, but the ball has snuck through. It was another excellent line from Jerome Taylor, nipping back at Collingwood. Full, doing him for pace. And England in all kinds of disarray. That really summed it up with Collingwood being bold and him herring up and down the pitch for two. 23 for five. Well, this will give us a better idea here. Inside edge, yes, and that's why he took off. But the ball just brushed the leg stump as it went down towards fine leg. Leg bail dismissed. He realized what had taken place, or is, is he sure? He's still appealing. It's 23 for five. Right on target again, Jerome Taylor. Well, we were mentioning, weren't we, the line he's bowled to the right-handers, and the delivery that got Collingwood was the perfect illustration of this. On or around off stump, angling back with uh, a little bit of uneven bounce and good pace. It really has been a superb exhibition of bowling from Taylor. Why what Paul Collingwood was doing, airing up and down the pitch, I don't know. That conversation could have been him asking Flint of exactly what had taken place. He's given England's batsman no width. Chris Gale has set uh, fielders on the leg side, so Jerome Taylor's had cover there, and that's allowed him to bowl at the stumps. So it's a combination of the captain and the bowler in unison here. They know what they're doing. Captain set a certain field and the bowler has bowled to the plan. 
on a surface like this as has been a few balls are keeping low that's exactly what you have got to do you have got the ball reasonably straight off stump yes but reasonably straight and give the ball a protection on that onside you certainly can't have a biased offside field and tell him ball outside the off stump it has to be evenly spaced onside offside the line is still off stump but that just gives him the room to get very tight on off stump so if he's worked onto the onside it's not free easy runs let's not forget Suleiman Ben at the other end as well who talk often in the past about partnerships of pace bowlers here in the Caribbean but Suleiman Ben holding up his end as well seven overs one maiden one for eight so pressure coming at both ends and Il England wilting under that pressure no question about that Savina Parker buzz you often see it in the Caribbean the crowd get going bowler gets on a roll and you need the strongest mental the players who are the strongest mentally to get through Five wickets for Jerome Taylor. And they're only six down. Five for 11, 7.5 overs of superb fast bowling from Jerome Taylor. Honing in on that off stump. Ball after ball after ball at high pace. This one actually was a little bit slower. With a bit of off cut on it. There goes the finger action. Ball just nipping back through the gate and rocking that off stump straight out of the ground. Matt Pryor gone for none. Jerome Taylor absolutely delighted. And the West Indies right on top now, England 23 for six. This could be close. Misses. Philip Edwards coming in at mid on. Well, that was a long run, and Stuart Broad was dawdling at the non striker's end. There's only one man on the onside at quite a straightish mid on, so just watch Stuart Broad at the non striker's end. Hey. It's just a lot of ball watching for a very long single. Well, he's on strike now and he has a lot of company. Five fielders around the bat. Get him! And caught. Suleiman Ben gets his second. England are seven down. Unbelievable stuff from the West Indies. Stuart Broad can't believe it. They'll need a wheelbarrow to cart him off. He doesn't want to go. But he'll have to. He's just turned one straight into the hands of short legs. Suleiman Ben strikes his second. This is good backup work from him to back up excellent work from Jerome Taylor. Plenty of company, as Michael Holding said. And one of those for company was at short leg, and it was the simplest chance, really. Xavier Marshall didn't have to move, stayed down, took the catch comfortably. And off went Suleiman Ben. Great celebrations here at Sabina Park. England capitulating. Seven down, broad gone for none. Just 26 on the board. Well, not too sure what that touched. It was a bit of an appeal, but it was floored. Flintoff looking at his side or his shirt other than the glove short ball again and Flintoff didn't know much about it yeah, just hit the sleeve on his uh, upper arm will be trying his best to make sure there is no single taken off this delivery 
Well bowled again. Excellent bowling from Jerome Taylor. Another maiden over. 26 for 7. Well, nearly took the man's at uh, uh, Gully's head off there. It's a boundary. Thirty-seven for seven. Fine shot. Fine shot by Flintoff. Hammered through extra cover. Really a half volley and put it away really well. Yeah, you can just tell from Flintoff's body language at the crease that he now wants to play a few shots. The run rate only at one and a half runs per over, but Flintoff can change that with his power if he bats for a while longer. There he goes again. Gone one bounce to the boundary, to two successive fours off Ben. England's lowest test score has been passed with that shot and so has been the 46 which they made against the West Indies in Port of Spain in 1994 49 for 7 they might have gone past a couple of statistical milestones but they really have to concentrate on the game here Flintoff has to stay positive side bottom has to stay obdurate Stick with Flintoff, side bottom yet to be dismissed in the game. And if you look at all seven dismissals, none of them had anything to do with the surface. Had everything to do with that man, Taylor. There's not been a delivery that's rolled along the ground and got an LBW or bowled, it's just a skill of the bowling. Pitch has actually played pretty well. Yeah, the Richards was making the point on radio that he felt that Edwards should be brought on here with 9-10 uh, Jack in. He hadn't got a wicket in the first innings, an opportunity for him just to pick up a wicket or two with it lower order in, just boost his confidence. Yeah, I was surprised because of his action and he's quite a hostile character and tail enders don't like that hostility and don't pick up an action like his well so it might be a change pretty soon Chris Gale might have a little bowl at the left hander side bottom there's a bit of rough out there there's plenty of options there's no reason to panic yet Gale's done most things right in this test match passing the bat the previous delivery from Paul but he hasn't uh, really troubled the batsman in this spell of his well ball, well ball, ben. clever bowling by Ben he knows ball. now he knows that Flintoff is after him oh Raises the 50 for England. A few rather ironic cheers from the England supporters. Cheers of relief, perhaps, that they have got to the 50. Didn't look at one stage as if they might. But this is a useful partnership, 24 between them. <laughs> and he's given him... Rudy Kurtzen has given him challenge, wants a referral. Flintoff, correction, side bottom wants a referral. Rudy Kurtzen has said that's out. Immediately, side bottom, without even referring to his partner, says, could we have a referral? Not a no-ball legal delivery, that's checked first. Now, is there something for the third umpire, Daryl Harper, a definite error that's been made in the mirror, in the middle? Is there a definite error? There's no edge, no inside edge, so all it can be is, is it going on to hit the stumps? It's hit in line. Daryl Harper has to see a definite error here. 
He can't go with gut feeling. He can't go with benefit of the doubt. Rudy Kurtzin gave it very slowly. And he will receive advice from Daryl Harper now. England 50 for 7. Will it be 50 for 8? At the moment, it's 50 for 8. But it may go back to 50 for 7 on the refund. And it's out. So Ben gets his third wicket. Side bottom loses the referral. And England are 50 for 8. And side bottom not happy. Proud is. Well, Strauss not happy either. But I don't think the players really are understanding the system, to be honest. The only reason the third umpire is being used is to make sure there hasn't been an absolutely obvious error. Now, that ball, according to Hawkeye, would have gone on to miss the leg stump, but that is just a gut feeling of the third umpire. Side bottom has gone. He's not happy. He's gone for six. It's 50 for eight. Full toss from uh, Edwards. Flintoff uh, doing some strange things here. Yeah, he's setting up for the big shot. He knows Harmison won't hang along, hang around that long. Panasar in next. Flintoff knows now that it's time for the slog. The left leg will go out of the way. Mid-wicket will be targeted. You think that's the way to go? I think it's the way Flintoff will go. Armson won't hang around forever. He wants to play some shots. It won't be easy. I, I hope he doesn't try and go too square because with Fidel Edwards and his skiddy nature, it will get under the bat. He's still got to play mid on and maybe drag it mid wicket. If he tries to slog across the line, he could see his stumps in a heap. Bowled him. Edwards picks up the wicket. His first of the test match. It's a big one in sprint off. West Indies are happy on the field, just as happy off it. 51 for nine, England one wicket away from a heavy defeat. Everything Chris Gale does works. He's gone to Fidel Edwards, Andrew Flintoff going across the line. He just had a gut feeling he was going to go too square. Big shot was always coming, and Flintoff was trying to hit it mid-wicket when he should have tried to drag it. All credit to Edwards, he got it straight. And he has the big breakthrough of Andrew Flintoff. West Indies boys start to celebrate. Flintoff's gone for 24. It's 51 for nine. the stumps that's it he's dragged it back onto the stumps the West Indies have won a famous victory all out 51 England Suleiman Ben with his fourth wicket it's the third lowest total by England in all test matches and the West Indies have secured a quite magnificent and perhaps unexpected victory over England Joy on the field and around the ground here at Sabina Park. There's a day and a half remaining in this test match. The West Indies secured a lead on first innings today of 74. It looked to be a reasonable lead, but certainly not a commanding one. And a spell of fast bowling, which would compare with any previously seen on this ground. And there have been many by Jerome Taylor set up the West Indies for this victory and they've completed it by dismissing England for 51. Victory for the West Indies by an innings and 23 runs. 22. Depressed England fans, depressed England team. There have been issues off the field, there's been distractions. IPL distractions, contract distractions. The team have not been a happy team off the field so far in the Caribbean. But all credit to Chris Gale and his side. It has been 
a real team performance. Gale and Peterson, the star players shake hands, but to be honest, West Indies have completely outplayed England, and today they have been exceptional.